remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again, and this is a great day for us. This is a celebratory day, a happy day here in the America's evil genius studios, because something has happened over the weekend that that we're we're very happy about, we're very proud of. You know, I, I've I've noticed over the years that conservatives, when when we get a win, when we when we accomplish something, we don't often stop to celebrate it. We don't really pat ourselves in the back. You know, too much when we do something right, because there's so many things going on in this nation, so many uh, different people trying to, to screw up this country, and so much oppression that we face each and every day that we, we seem to go from battle to battle to battle to battle. And when we win a battle, we don't really stop to think about it much or stop to trumpet it. But I think we need to do that. I think it's something we have to do for encouragement's sake, and so the rest of the world knows what we offer and what we're doing and what we accomplish. One of those accomplishments happened this weekend. Piers Morgan, he of CNN, is having his show canceled. That was the announcement over the weekend from CNN. Piers Morgan is gone. And even Piers himself has admitted, quote, that Americans are, quote, tired of hearing me bang on about gun control, end quote. Well, your ratings would have been a pretty good uh, clue to that, I suppose. But let's make no mistake why this is happening. This is not just some random event. Piers Morgan is being run off of television because of us, because of you and I, because of conservative Americans, traditional Americans, and those Americans who believe in the principles of our founding father. We are the reason that he's gone. We are the reason that CNN is shit canning him. And it didn't happen overnight. We didn't just watch his show one day and say, well, he's bad. No, day after day, week after week, Month after month, year after year, we continually highlighted the un-American statements that he made. And we continually let the American people know how dangerous Piers Morgan it was and how his opinions have no place on American television. That they are unacceptable in the American television environment. And when I say unacceptable, I'm not talking about from a legal perspective. He has his freedom of speech, that's fine. You can say what you want. But you see... The rest of America does not have any obligation to listen to your free speech, nor do we have any obligation to support a network that gives you a forum for spouting off such dangerous rhetoric. You don't have that right at all. You don't have that expectation at all. And we put our foot down, and we ran you right the hell off of television. For all I care, you can go back to England if they'll have you. Or hell, maybe there'll be Piers Morgan tonight in Ethiopia or somewhere. I don't know, but you ain't going to be here, pal. Now, I think this signifies something much more important than just one guy's show being taken off CNN. I'm noticing a little bit of a, I don't want to say a trend, but I'm, I'm noticing a little bit of a tsunami coming here. It's a small tsunami now, but I think it's going to be big in the future. I look at what happened to Piers Morgan this weekend, and I look back to the Duck Dynasty situation when A&E tried to suspend Phil Robertson and try to take him off the air for supposedly controversial statements. But what happened? America stood up. America took to social media just as we did with Piers Morgan. America made their voice known and said, don't you dare suspend Phil Robertson. He says what I would have said if a reporter would have asked me, don't you dare take him off the air. You put him back on your network. And a and &E acquiesced, and he's back on the network. You see, what's happening here is that after decades, traditional Americans are finally using our muscle in the marketplace. We're flexing our muscles. You know, for years, for decades, TV networks and producers and so forth would, would cater to these little fringe groups in America, like your minorities or your gays or your feminists or whatever it was, whatever group of the day it was. They would be so scared of offending them that they'd bend over backwards to accommodate them. And on, on some level, it makes a little bit of sense because you never you never want to alienate potential customers. You want to have as big of a cashman area as you can, you know, for potential business. I don't have a problem with that. But the the thing that was wrong with it, the problem with it, was that they took for granted us. 
They took for granted mainstream America. They took for granted traditional America. They took for granted the Midwest and the South of this country. Because they thought, hey, if we count out of the gays, if we count out of the anti-gun brigade, if we count out to the feminists or whatever, the minorities, whatever, that middle America won't go anywhere. They'll still watch our show. We don't have to worry about losing them. But what you found out after Duck Dynasty, what you found out in Piers Morgan's ratings, is that you very much do have to worry about losing us. And all your efforts not to offend fringe groups are offending us. And we have a little bit more muscle in the marketplace than they do. So guess what? Maybe now you have to bend over backwards and accommodate us. You see, it's a trend I'm, I'm seeing that People in L.A. and New York don't see it yet, but much like any other tsunami, it starts out as a little ripple way, way out there in the ocean, and nobody really sees it until it's too late, and it's a wall of water that comes crashing into land, destroying everything in its sight. That's what we're doing. That's the tsunami of traditional America. Now, before I go this week, I do have one little piece of advice for CNN. Obviously, you thought that Bringing a, an international perspective on, Americans is, on American issues would uh, be appealing to the American television viewer. You can see now that it was not. Piers' ratings prove that. So that ship has sailed and it sank. But nevertheless, it's clear that CNN has been in, in a bit of a ratings issue, a bit of a ratings funk for several years now. And you've tried a lot of different things to to bolster yourself and get the ratings back up. You've changed presidents, you've changed head honchos, you've changed talent on the air, you've changed emphasis, you've done a lot of things, and frankly, none of them have worked. Might I suggest an idea that you haven't tried, CNN? And you're gonna think this is a little radical, but when you think about it from a business perspective, you'll see that it's not. As it stands today, CNN is a liberal news network. Now, you'd probably deny that, but I think most people, if they watch it, would detect at least a significant amount of liberal bias. Now, it's certainly not worn on the sleeve like it is on MSNBC. It may not be as obvious. It's a little bit more understated, but it's clearly there. You are a liberal news network. I don't think too many people would argue with that. There's a problem with that, though, and it's not just on an ideological basis. It's not just that I don't like your ideology. I think there's a business problem with it. You see... If you're going to be a network that distributes a liberal worldview, if you're going to use a liberal bias in your news reporting and your commentary, which you have every right to do, you run into the business problem of having an awful lot of competition. You see, if you're going to be the liberal news network, if you're going to be the network that pushes a liberal worldview out there, you're competing with all of the other networks, except for Fox News. You're competing with MSNBC and NBC, CBS, ABC, Al Jazeera. You're competing with all the sitcoms, all the movies, all the drama shows, all the music, all the entertainment media, all the magazines, all the newspapers. You've got a lot of competition out there. It's got to be really tough to grab any kind of market share from a pie that's got that many fingers in it. So might I suggest this, CNN, instead of trying to be another liberal news network and trying to outdo all of the other liberal influences in the media, why don't you do an about face? Why don't you become a conservative news network? CNN could be the conservative news network. There's room out there for you. I mean, believe it or not, there's a lot of people who watch Fox News who nevertheless are disgusted by how far to the center they are. There's a lot of room to the right of Fox News. A guy like Bill O'Reilly, I can't hardly watch him because he's too far to the center. He disgusts me part of the time. There's room out there to the right of Fox News. And more to the point, where the liberal pie has so many fingers in it, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS, newspapers, magazines, movies, music, sitcoms, all the rest, the conservative pie has very few hands in it. You're, you have, you got to compete with... Fox News, okay, they're formidable, but you got Fox News, you got talk radio, you got a few sites on the internet. That's all. That's it. That's all you have to compete with. It seems to me like it would be much easier to carve market share out of that pie where there's fewer fingers in it than it would be to carve market share out of an already diluted and oversaturated liberal marketplace. It just makes business sense. So, to my fellow conservatives, congratulations. We accomplished something. We got Piers Morgan the hell off the air. And we proved 
And we show to anybody that comes after him that anti-gun rhetoric, anti-Second Amendment rhetoric, anti-patriot rhetoric, anti-American rhetoric has no place on the American airwaves. And you will be destroyed if you try to do it. And to CNN, I hope you learn from this valuable lesson. You learn who took him off the air, and you learn who will be happy to watch your network and patronize your advertisers if you accommodate us. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.